Good morning, Church. Today we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. Two questions we need to ask ourselves. What's a king? And what's Christ our king? The Jewish community asked God to give them a king. But when they did that, they asked or desired a person who could help them live in peace and harmony with dignity and justice. And if he didn't do that, then they prayed to God that he would take the king away and give them a new one. Let me read the passage from Second Samuel, used to be called Second Kings. But it reads as follows. Then all the tribes of Israel went to David at Hebron and said to him, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, even when Saul was still our king, you led the people of Israel in battle, and the Lord promised you that you would lead his people and be their ruler. So all the leaders of Israel came to King David in Hebron. He made a sacred, a sacred alliance with them, and they anointed him, and he became king of Israel. The Jewish community were not looking for someone to sit on the throne and charge them taxes. They wanted somebody who could help them be a strong nation for peace and justice. And that they could live in peace and harmony with their neighbors. And this was the aspiration that Jesus came to fulfill also. Jesus knew that God loved him, called him his son. He also knew that it wasn't that he was special, but they were all sons and daughters of God, brothers and sisters to each other. He knows that his dignity that the Father bestows is on all children. And we are called to know that dignity and to live as brothers and sisters. It says no male nor female, Gentile or Jew, all are welcome at the table of God. When some people wanted to make Jesus a king, they were responding to this offer of peace and well-being that they believed he could bring to them. Now when Jesus spoke out against the Roman imperialism that was mistreating the Jewish community, The Roman government executed him. They didn't go after his followers because they knew he was nonviolent, but they felt, get rid of him and we'll have our peace. But with the resurrection of Jesus, his disciples felt his spirit. They call it the Christ Spirit. And the Christ Spirit called them to live in peace and harmony. And we're trying to do it 2,000 years later today. Now, if we wanted to 
live in this peace and harmony to bring about the kingdom of God. I think we have a couple of good examples that were given to us. One is the Amish Christian community in 2006 when a Christian man who was angry with God for the death of his child decided to punish God by killing other children. And so he went into an Amish schoolhouse, put all the boys outside, and then executed the girls. Now what's rather interesting about this terrible tragedy was that he also killed himself. And a few days later, when he was being buried, lots of the Amish families who would have their child killed by him showed up at his funeral and offered condolence to his wife and children. And when money poured in from all over the world to help this Amish community to heal from the tragedy. They shared the money also with the killer's wife and children because they said they too lost. The tragedy wasn't just the children the killer killed, but the family of the killer. That we saw was a Jew Christian understanding of how to reach out with love and kindness. Now another one was after 9-11 a week after 9-11, when a Christian man who was angry with Osama bin Laden decided to kill a Muslim. And he chose, just at random, Balbir Saudi, who happened to be a Sikh, not a Muslim. But because he wore a headdress, this Christian man thought he was a Muslim and shot him. A little later, they asked the wife of Mr. Sodi, do you have anything to say to the American people? And she said, yes, I'd like to thank them. And they said, thank them for what? She said, well, at the funeral for my husband, 3,000 people, Americans, showed up for the funeral. People I didn't know who didn't know me, and yet they came to offer condolence at the death of my husband. And it was a great source of healing for me. And I want to thank America for that. Now we're at the moment in the midst of a pandemic which is making us aware of systemic violence and injustice 
and we see the issue with who's going to be our next president and who's cheating and who isn't cheating. And I have to ask myself the question, if I'm following Jesus the Christ and I look at an America where half or almost half the community is pointing the finger at the other half, claiming their man should be the winner, I realize that if I am to follow this Jesus, I can't go pointing the finger. I have to reach out with peace and goodwill to both sides in this election of our king. And I realize that if you want to follow Jesus the Christ, you're called to do the same. So it's not a case of having a smug face if we're with the eventual winner or a gloomy face if we don't get what we want. We're called to live in peace and harmony. And if we follow that Christ, then perhaps God's kingdom can become reality. And we will have Christ our King. God bless you.